So in my last video, I covered one of the most basic recursive functions, the Fibonacci sequence. And I mentioned that I'd be covering one more example in this video, which will be bubble sort. And I'm going to implement this first iteratively and then recursively, and we'll be able to see some of the differences. And when I say I'm implementing something iteratively, I just mean with loops instead of using a recursive call. So let's get started here. So I'm going to define a function called bubble sort. It'll take a list of numbers. And I'm going to loop through this list, but I'm going to loop through the length of the list rather than iterate over its values themselves because I want to also have their indexes. So if I say something like this and then actually key into the list at index i, I'll have a little more flexibility and you'll see why in a second. But actually what I'm going to do first is nest two loops here. And for this inner loop, I'm going to stop one short of the last element. And what I'm going to do here is set a variable for the current element at the jth index. And the next element will be the j plus oneth index. And I'm just going to say if current greater than next, list j equals next, list j plus one equals current. And then finally, I'll return the list. So what we can do to test this is let's create a variable called my list, and we'll take list of range of 15, and then we'll import the random module and call random.shuffle on my list. So what this is doing is it's taking the numbers from 0 to 14, it's turning them into a list from a range object, and then it's calling this random.shuffle function, which will just put them in a random order. And then we can print my list. And then we can also call our bubble sort function on my list. And then if we run it, we'll see this random order list and our output will be the sorted list. So let's see what's actually going on here. In our bubble sort function, which by the way is not very efficient, what we're doing is we're looping through the list, but for each item in the list, we're looping again through the list and checking each element and the element after it. And if that element is greater than the element after it, we'll just switch them here. And if you think about it, we can't just have this inner loop. In fact, I'll show you what happens if we do. If we just run it like this, we don't actually successfully sort our list. And that's because, as you can see, like if we go through it like this, we see that we switch the four and the five correctly. Then it moves to the four and the 14, and those are fine. Then it looks at the 14 and the 12 and it switches them. And then when it moves to the next value here, it's comparing the 14 now instead of the 12, because we switched them. It was comparing the 14 and the six, and those also get switched. And then it does the same thing with the 10. And in fact, because the 14 is the biggest in our list, it'll do that with every other element here. So none of the other elements are actually gonna change their order. The 14 is just gonna sort of move through to the end here. And then that was the one loop we did, and then we're done. But if we put that inside of this, other loop, and we're actually doing this, we're doing that whole process for each index of the list, that will actually be enough to sort the whole list. Because even if the thing with the 14 happened from the very start, where it only sorted that one number to its correct spot, it would still do that for every single number, and we'd end up with a sorted list like we do here. So now let's walk through the recursive version. So now to implement our recursive function, we actually need to take in another variable. Uh, this will be n, and it'll represent the length of the list. So if n equals 1, we will just return the list. Let's return it. And, and actually, we don't really need an else since we're returning inside our if statements. So we could just start our loop. So for i in range len list minus one. Uh, and this is going to be the same as we did before, where we need the index and we want to stop one before because we'll be looking at the current index and the next one. And once again, current will equal the list at i, and next will equal at i plus one. And if current is greater than next, once again, we will switch them. Whoops. List i plus one equals current. Okay, so that was our inner loop, if you'll recall from the iterative example. And we're going to sort of implement this outer loop in a recursive fashion. And the way we're going to do that is outside the loop, we're going to call rec bubble sort on list n minus 1. 
So this way we're basically counting down, we're basically just implementing a loop with this recursive call by counting down the length of the list, decrementing it n by one each time, so that we'll do this recursive call n times n being the length of the list. And so if we just like, let's copy this code and put it down here and call rec bubble sort and put in len of list here. Sorry, len of my list. And actually before we run this, I made a mistake here. And also I'm gonna return this. So we actually are returning our value. Now if we run it, it works. So this isn't like a particularly helpful recursive implementation. We basically just replaced our outer loop. And we also had to add this extra argument. And I'll actually show you a nice little trick for getting rid of that extra argument. Because it starts out as the length of the list, it's information that we can actually just get by passing in the list. So if I instead call this like rec helper, and then I just call rec helper here on list, len of list, then when I actually call my bubble sort, I, I can just call it on my list. I forgot that I need to rename this. So it is actually recursive. And then I also need to return. There we go. Okay. And then one last thing that I'm going to point out to really show that in this case, the recursive version is not better than the iterative version. And in fact, it's probably worse is I'm going to import this module called daytime from itself. I always thought that naming scheme was kind of weird, but that's how they do it. So I'll take the time before I run the function. Actually, I should put this right before I run it and then print out the now afterwards minus the now beforehand. And we get 323. I think those are microseconds, pretty short time. Let's see if it was any faster up here. Let's just copy this code. And we get one, two, three microseconds. So in this case, you might not notice the difference, but it is a difference. This was almost three times slower for the recursive call. And that has to do with loop structures being more efficient in most languages than recursive structures. And I'll get more into that in a later video where I'll actually discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using recursion instead of looping. But for the purposes of this video, we saw a couple ways to implement bubble sort. And in this case, this way is probably easier to read and faster. And so it would definitely be the way to go. But if you're interested in sorting, bubble sort is definitely not the way to go. So I will also eventually make a video on sorting and what some of the best sorting algorithms are. Anyway, if you like this video and want to see more content like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.